Today I wanted to talk about some tips that I've learned throughout my journey of losing weight, getting into health and fitness and just generally creating a good relationship with food because it's something I've struggled with my whole life and I feel like I have a lot of wisdom to give to everyone. A disclaimer, I am not a professional or a nutritionist uh, yet. The advice I give is based on my experience and the lessons that I've learned in achieving long-term weight loss and just generally creating a good relationship with food. It took me a really long time to get to where I am now. I remember when I got my first iPod, I was around nine years old. One of the first notes that I put in it was, I want to be skinny. And I remember that so vividly because we were sat in a restaurant and I was writing down my goals, you know, always being goal orientated. When I was around 13, that's when my body issues really kicked in. Around 15, I had an eating disorder, but that is a whole, that's a whole new video. That continued until I was about 17 years old. Even after my eating disorder was over, I still didn't have a good relationship with food. Just because I didn't have an eating disorder doesn't mean that my relationship suddenly became all healthy and all rounded. I overate a lot, I snacked a lot, I didn't eat foods that really were good for my body or that made me feel good. It wasn't until I was 19, until I started really to learn and become self-aware and educate myself. I think that's one of the key words in this is educate. Educate yourself, learn about things, be curious about things. However, me explaining to you my whole weight loss journey in details is going to take a really long time. So I'm just gonna stick to the top eight tips that I've learned from my experience. I just want to side note that weight loss isn't everything. When you love yourself, that's when everything goes into perspective. When you change your perspective into a positive perspective and have love for yourself, that's when you start to see the beauty in things that you once thought were ugly. So that's another one of the reasons why I want to share these lessons is not because they made me lose weight or they made me become this gym rat. It's because they changed my perspective and overall made me feel good about myself which is the number one thing that anyone should be aiming for is just to feel good about themselves people think that oh if i don't lose weight then i'm never going to be happy with myself i thought that i thought that most of my life it's about the mindset you have that will make you feel good about yourself not what you look like tip number one is you don't have to eat clean and healthy all the time that will never work, it's not sustainable. It's not normal to eat clean every day for the rest of your life. You still should eat the foods that you enjoy. You still should order pasta when you go to that Italian restaurant. You still should eat that cookie when you're with your friends and they're all having one and you want one. How you go about approaching eating and your eating habits makes a huge difference to whether your weight loss will be long-term or whether it'll be short-term. It is not sustainable to eat super healthy, restrict yourself, uh, aim for this crazy low body fat percentage that is actually really hard to upkeep and maintain. So I guess the lesson here is you don't have to eat clean foods all the time. You don't have to restrict yourself. You can still eat the food you want. You can still eat the foods that you want. Number two is change your language in how you approach eating. One technique I learned from Mind Pumps podcast is to stop telling myself oh i can't have this instead i try to tell myself i can have it if i really want it if you want that cookie eat the damn cookie have it if you really want it sometimes when i do that it really makes me evaluate like hey do i really want this like do i really want to eat that cookie or am i just eating it out of the convenience that it's in front of me or that it's in my cupboard or that everyone else is eating it but deep down i know that i don't feel like eating it when you tell yourself that you can't do something in the long term that's really gonna mess you up because personally for me when i tell myself i can't do something i will do it later on in the future whether i like it or not as an opposition to myself for saying no this is a bit of a side note but another technique that i use is if I really want something, I tell myself I can have it, but I have to make it myself. If I want a cookie, I have to bake that cookie. I have to get the ingredients and bake that cookie. And 
that also makes you really question like maybe i don't really want it because if you really want something you'll make it happen you'll make it work number three is you don't have to count calories for the rest of your life if you want to lose weight then you might have to count calories because you need to be on a calorie deficit and that is science that is fact the thing that counting does is it makes you aware of the foods that you are eating for example i didn't know how much calories mozzarella had until i started counting if you are someone who is not making progress or you feel like you're doing everything in your power to lose weight do this do that and it's not working and you're not counting your calories it might be because of that you really don't know how much calories is in food until you start counting and you're going to be surprised and when you count your calories as well make sure to measure your foods because generally life sum and fitness pal it's all kind of a general weight of foods like a hundred gram of sweet potato is not necessarily going to be one medium sweet potato it's always going to weigh out to be a little bit different and the calories that you don't count can add up once you start tracking and getting familiar with the foods that you're eating and you've tracked for a while i tracked for around a year you will become aware of the foods and you can just eat foods and you'll have an estimate of how much calories are in your meal so i just want to say food is meant to have calories food is meant to have calories please remember that because people view calories as a bad thing i don't blame them i did too um but calories are not a bad thing calories are meant to be in food you are meant to have calories number four is the less sweet stuff you consume the less you will crave the taste buds can adapt so if you're eating a lot of sweet stuff you're going to crave sweet stuff or if you're eating a lot of junk food you will crave junk food just think about that when you are reaching for junk food or sweet stuff it's like you're reaching for it out of habit especially if it's something that you usually do if it's a habit you have like snacking and eating bad food then it's just something you're gonna have to work on habit wise you might think oh my god how can i give up my m ms my chocolate you don't have to give it up just eat less of it and create a habit out of not eating it and then you will only eat it when you really truly crave it rather than eating it out of habit which is something that we all do also a little side note before i go into the next point I don't mean to label any food as good or bad. No food should be labeled as good and bad. There's just foods that serve your body better than other foods and foods that necessarily don't do much for your body either. Number five is pay attention to how your body feels after you eat. Another word for this is mindful eating. I would consider mindful eating a skill. It is something that you need to practice and repeat to create a habit out of. But when you mindfully eat, you start to notice patterns in your eating. And from those patterns, you start to notice behaviors. And from that, you can make changes to your lifestyle. For example, something I learned really recently about myself is that when I let myself have something sweet, then I will crave sweet stuff the next day too. And so I have to give myself that pause in between days of having something sweet because it can really put me on a streak and another example is i love bread absolutely love bread but i've noticed that when i eat bread i have more cravings throughout the day as when i don't eat bread so it's just these little things you can notice when you start to ask yourself how you feel before during and after eating certain foods another good example is specifically in like the health and fitness industry with protein bars for me a lot of protein bars affect my stomach badly i bloat like crazy and that's something else that you can pay attention to how do you bloat after you eat certain food sometimes our overeating comes from a psychological mental standpoint usually when we go to binge eat or eat junk food it is coming from a psychological thing inside us sometimes it is from a place of habit is just something that we create a bad habit out of but sometimes we lean towards these foods that aren't necessarily um, good for our body because we're trying to fulfill something else inside us we are looking for a short-term fix to the problems that we are experiencing and feeling just so we can forget about them for a little bit and 
food is a great quick solution to make us feel better. Our problems always seem a little bit smaller when we are eating chocolate or a fat burger and those serotonin levels are coming and then they fade and once they fade we want even more food or we want something else we want this quick fix the next time to combat this is just to acknowledge your feelings ask yourself how you feel why you feel that way and just look into other ways to solve that in you you don't dislike the gym you just haven't found something that works for you yet. I've been in and out of the gym since I was 13 and it wasn't until I was about 19 that I created a consistent, sustainable habit towards it. That was when I discovered weightlifting and general strength training and I just absolutely fell in love. Before at the gym, I thought that the gym was a place where you go to run for an hour or cycle or just do some sort of cardio. like. That was my image when someone told me to go to the gym, that is what I would be doing. Maybe some squats, maybe some burpees, something like that. So my advice is find an exercise that works for you, fall in love with it, create discipline around it, and everything else will fall into place. There are so many things to try, but if you can't think of anything, Google it, go on TikTok. Those things that come to my head is weightlifting, resistance training, yoga, hot yoga, um, workout classes, swimming, um, workout classes in a the park. There is a movement for everyone out there, I truly believe that. And the final point that I wanted to make is it will take time. And by time, I mean that it could take a year or more. It could take a few months. It depends, everyone's different. Everyone adapts differently. Everyone learns differently, but it takes time. Especially if you're someone who has had an unhealthy relationship with food for years, such as myself, then it's going to take time to take your brain out of that thinking pattern. Shifting from negative perspective to positive perspective, it's not an easy thing to do, especially if your brain is just wired that way, you're going to have to unlearn everything and learn it again. But you just need to be patient, especially if you know that you're doing everything right. Even I myself, I'm not where I want to be. My journey's still going. And I still have things to learn. I am still, I am still learning. The, we never stop learning. Um, no one knows everything. Everyone's sort of figuring things out as they go. Um, even the most smart, knowledgeable person in the health and fitness industry, they still have things to learn. But this again links back to why it is so important to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, this journey is not going to be long term. You're going to just go like this the whole time. So making changes from a love standpoint, that's when it's long term, that's when it's sustainable. And I think that is the biggest lesson of all in this is do it from a place of love, don't do it from a place of hate. And the thing is, there are so many diets you can try, so many influences you can follow, so many workouts you can follow, so many articles you can read. But at the end of the day, it is about what you enjoy and your own perspective. Life is all about perspective. And that that is such a big lesson for me. Just perspective, the way you look at things is the way you go about everything. If anyone has found this video useful or wants me to dive into further little topics that I mentioned in the video or any sort of topic relating food, fitness and health, then I am very happy to go into it. Just drop me a message or comment below and I will get to you. If you want further resources to refer to in terms of these all these topics that I mentioned, I really, really, really recommend Mind Pump Media. I have a podcast, Instagram and YouTube. So if you're confused on anything, I really recommend them because they are very simple in the way they approach things. They don't overcomplicate things. They are very science-based, but they also give you advice from their own experience as trainers who have been in the industry for many, many years. Some other people I would recommend is Hannah Olberg. She has her own app with her own workout programs. And these are the ones that I followed when I first went to the gym. And so if you're starting out at the gym, I really, really recommend Hannah. She, her programs are absolutely amazing. You can choose based on your skill and what are you trying to achieve. I'm sure there are a lot of great resources out there, but these are the ones that I personally have stuck to and still refer to now. 
but I think it is really important to create a support system and people you refer to whenever you get lost or want to know anything just because it's so hard to do this on your own and you're not going to figure out everything yourself that quickly so it is just a little bit quicker referring to resources that you trust and finding out things google things be curious continue learning continue educating yourself continue challenging your perspective with health and fitness but with everything else as well Thank you.